uh, okay so first let me define the architecture so okay adams has a lot of modules okay so what we are seeing over here is adams car okay adams car is used mainly for uh, passenger vehicles light trucks and commercial trucks uh, so we are using adams car because mainly we use the car module of adams for uh, delivering engineering solutions because adams car is more customized uh, for uh, car uh, for cars per se but there is another important module of adams which is called adams view uh, wherein which is a more general platform on which we can do mechanism synthesis of uh, of different mechanisms so for instance a wiper mechanism or a, a hatchback mechanism you can synthesize any any general mechanism in adams view yeah and you know and optimize the mechanism in adams view so other than adams view you also have adams engine um adams flex adams chassis these are different modules which we use for specific purposes right now what we are going to see is the adams car module so uh, going right into adams car okay so adams car is is designed in such a way it is designed in three levels okay so at the base level is the template level okay you have the base which is the template level one step higher is the subsystem level and on the top is the assembly level okay so template subsystem and assembly okay and whenever you enter adams car it asks you whether to go into assembly level or into template level okay so let's start with the template level let me also tell you the functionality so right now we are in the template mode so let's open the template of a suspension okay so so as all of us mainly deal with uh, a double wishbone suspension here we have a double wishbone suspension at the template level okay so at the template level what we do is we basically define the parts of the suspension okay the parts and the connection between the parts okay so look at this over here we have so this is our standard double wishbone suspension okay so the red part over here is the lower arm the blue part is the knuckle and the you know a darker blue part is the upper control arm or the uca uh, we define the parts we define the different joints between the parts so as you can see over here there is a this is the lower ball joint right between the lower control arm and the knuckle similarly we have the upper ball joint over here right similarly between the knuckle and the tie rod you have a ball joint so all your connections and your different i'm not going to go in a lot of detail right now because we have limited amount of time i'm just going to give you an overview of how adams car works and show you a couple of case studies which is going to be more important we'll cover it in detail in the course right so in the template level we define all the parts and its connections so we have defined a spring damper bump stops so all the parts that you want to uh, define in the suspension are defined at the uh, template level okay uh once you have defined all the parts and their connections then you go to making a subsystem okay so so once you have defined all your parts it's open a subsystem so it asks me whether i want to use the same template as it's already loaded in the template builder 
I say yes, and you you form a subsystem of the template. Okay, so in the subsystem level, what we do is that we define various uh, properties of different parts. So in the subsystem level, you can maybe define the uh, you know the mass and inertia properties of different uh, suspensions. So you know for every part, you can define the mass inertia properties. So the principal inertia as well as the cross diagonal inertia. Uh, for those who are familiar with uh, vehicle dynamics, you also know about the sprung and the unsprung mass. So you can define what percentage of the vehicle of the component mass goes into sprung or unsprung. You can define the material if it is a flex body. Right. So for every part, you can define the mass and inertia. Other than the parts, you know, you can define the spring stiffness for uh, the spring. So yeah, this is the spring that we had defined in the template builder. Here you can define the property of the spring. So this is the linear. This is the linear spring that we have over here. Uh, depending on your vehicle, you can put the actual data of the spring right uh, similarly you can define the damper properties and the bush properties right so let me just give you an example so this is uh, one of the bushes that we have okay and this is the mm, you know this is the translational stiffness let's play with the rotational stiffness so so the blue line which is highlighted is the rotational stiffness of the spring okay and say i want to change it um, say i want to make it around 10 times the stiffness okay that's it 20 times that's it so i have changed the spring stiffness let's save this And let's go back to our subsystem level. So we just formed a new bush in which we increase the bush stiffness. Okay, let's refer that bush over here. So this is the new bush that we had made. I'm going to give that over here. Let's change this bush as well with the new bush. Okay. So what we have basically done is that we have changed the bush stiffness at the subsystem level. So we are going to give all the properties in the subsystem level. Uh, so these properties that you're going to give are the base properties, okay? So you're starting with these properties, okay? They don't have to be the final or the final values of uh, the spring or the bush stiffnesses, okay? We are going to optimize our suspension in the assembly level to get a desired value of bush uh, stiffness or spring stiffnesses okay so once we have formed the subsystem by giving all the properties you form the assembly right so you say file open assembly So it asks me whether I need to use the same template. I say yes. That's it. So now we are at the assembly level. Okay. So at the assembly level of the suspension, what we have is we'll have all the parts which have been connected as defined in the template. And the subsystem level, we define the properties. So those are also reflected in the assembly level. And finally, we are at the assembly suspension, uh, assembly level of the suspension uh, system only. Okay, so at the assembly level, what we do is we can do various simulations to tune the suspension. Okay, uh, so let me give you a simple example. Say, for instance, we would like to tune the wheel rate, the most basic parameter of a suspension. Okay, uh, so. Uh, 
so the major component uh, which gives it gives the stiffness to wheel rate is the spring so when i say we are going to tune the wheel rate it basically means that we want to find the right spring uh, for our suspension to get a desired wheel rate right now I don't remember if you guys remember but those of you who are taking the the actual course on vehicle dynamics another sheet hmm. so uh, you know uh, we had seen how to find the spring stiffness of a suspension so basically you know from your calculations of wheel rate you know that there is a simple equation Okay, so we'll just use a spreadsheet for initial calculations. So you know, uh, basically, what we want to do is we want to tune the wheel rate. Okay. Uh, so when I have to tune my wheel rate, I need to find what is the actual spring stiffness that I need to use in the vehicle. Okay. So let's go back to Adam Jones. Let's see what is the default spring stiffness that we have. Okay. this is seen over here what you see is that for 10 mm of deflection the spring gives a force of 1250 newtons okay so for 10 mm of deflection i have a force of 1250 right so that basically means that my spring stiffness stiffness becomes equal to 1250 divided by 10 right so the spring stiffness here is 125 newton per mm okay uh, so these are the adams values so this is input data okay so if from the spring stiffness if i would like to find what is the wheel rate okay what i require is another parameter called as motion ratio right and you know for simple so basically what is the motion ratio it is the uh, it is the the spring displacement divided by the wheel displacement right in other words how we generally calculate motion ratio for simple mechanisms is you know this length that is the length from the pivot to the strut bottom and divided by the length from the pivot to the lower ball joint right so let's see the coordinates or the y coordinates of this so what we are looking at is the y coordinate of the bush location right which is at 400 okay so let's just keep putting the data over here so we have the lca pivot y at 400 again mm where is the strut bottom so if you see the y coordinate of this it is at 600 mm right so we have the strut bottom y at 600 again mm and we have the lower ball joint right let's see where this is at this is at 750 mm right so this is the lower ball joint i'll just say lbj okay which is at 750 again mm okay so from this data we generally calculate our motion ratio right now what i'm showing you is the theoretical method of how we generally do it right so the motion ratio becomes this minus uh wait a second it is the lower pivot it is the strut bottom minus the pivot divided by the 
LBJ minus the pivot, right? So you have a motion ratio of uh, 0 0.571, right? So this becomes equal to this. So if I have my spring stiffness and motion ratio, I should be able to get my wheel rate, right? So let's see this. So what is the wheel rate equal to? The wheel rate would be equal to the spring stiffness into motion ratio the squared, right? Newton per mm. So from our theoretical calculations, we are expecting a wheel rate of close to 41 Newton per mm, okay? So this is a very basic calculation, okay? Now, let's see what is the actual motion ratio. Let's see what is the actual wheel rate that we actually have, okay? So, Okay, so to calculate the wheel rate, one of the, uh, you know, the easiest way to do it is to do a parallel wheel travel test, which is one of the KNC simulations. So you directly go to suspension and that. So, so we, are going to, we are going into the simulation part of it now. So we're going to simulate suspension analysis and parallel wheel travel. As you can see, there are a variety of tests that you can do. Uh, Right now, let us do the most basic of the test. This is a parallel wheel travel. Okay. So, hey, wait. Yeah. So uh, there are a couple of questions. Do you want to take the questions now or do you want to show something and then take the questions? Uh, let me just finish this and then we can take the questions sure. in this yeah. part, like maybe five minutes. Okay. Okay. So, let's just find the wheel rate. Let's do a small simulation, maybe 30 steps. So we need to specify the bump travel. Let's keep it at 15 mm in bump and minus 15 in rebound, just for simplicity. So this is the post-processing window of atoms wherein we can where we can see all the results basically. So if I need to find the wheel rate, what you're looking at is the travel or the wheel travel. This is it. On the x-axis, let's have the wheel travel. And on the y-axis, let's have the tar force. Right? not have the tire force, let's have the hub force, which is at the wheel center, right? Yes, sir. So let's see the left wheel force, the normal force. Okay. So what we have here is, this is basically the wheel travel. So on the x-axis, we have the wheel travel. And on the y-axis, we have the hub force or the wheel center force. And the slope of this graph gives us the wheel rate. As you can see, it's quite linear. What you're looking at, uh, at is the dy by dx, which is 55.53. Uh, just, uh, you're, you're supposed to be looking over here. Um, you're supposed to be looking in this area over here. You basically have to calculate the slope. Sorry. So you're supposed to be looking at the slope of this line, which says 55.336. Okay. So this is the actual force 
or this is the actual wheel rate of your suspension okay and from theory we found that the wheel rate was around 40 mm uh, which around 41 newton per mm okay so what could be the reasons for this uh, do you guys have any idea why is there a difference between the theoretical method and uh, the what, what adams is giving so there is a difference of around 15 right 15 divided by this there is a difference of around 36 percent between the results of adams and this what could be the reason for this if you have a response uh, could you type into the chat box can you ask that question i'm sorry okay. i think jay prakash is saying yeah. uh, I, I think the difference yeah. is due to the approximation method absolutely you know because uh, we have various approximations in our uh, in the theoretical method that we have so yeah the motion ratio is very approximated what we calculate the motion the formula that we use for motion ratio is for a straight line okay uh, is, is for a straight link, basically, okay? Um, whereas, as you can see in the model over here, you know, as you can see in the model over here, the link is not straight, the lower link, the red color link, it's inclined and it becomes even more inclined as it moves uh, upwards and downwards okay so one of the major approximations in our method is the approximation of motion ratio okay let's just look at what is the actual motion ratio in the vehicle so the motion ratio is nothing but the spring deflection so let's see the spring deflection so in spring you can see the displacement right so you have the spring displacement versus wheel travel and again you're looking at the slope so if you look at the slope it is 0 0.506 okay the slope is 0 0.506 okay so and what we saw over here is that we calculated a motion ratio of 0.571 so the actual motion ratio is lesser than uh, the motion ratio that we calculated via simplistic methods. So that is one error. What could be the other error? Any other uh, any other errors? So because what what is happening is just let's just go back to our Excel sheet over here. In this, if we say put 0 0.50, I think it was seven, right? So our more it's becoming even worse actually now. So what could be the reason, uh, you know, why, is there any other error in our uh, uh, theoretical method? So, um, Anna, okay, I have an answer, I think, because of steady state conditions. No, this is a quasi-static maneuver, you know, um, so it's almost at equilibrium. It is equilibrium. I have a doubt if we have push rod actuation. Oh my God, that is later, okay. So, um, uh, one of the major things that we miss out when we are calculating the wheel rate is the bush stiffnesses, you know. And so, all the bushes that you are seeing, uh, all these bushes which are attached to the lower control arm or the upper control arm, these bushes have a certain stiffness which impede the motion of the wheel, okay. So these bushes, these bush stiffnesses are giving a certain amount of stiffness to the wheel travel, okay, and they contribute to the wheel travel to a good uh, to a good percentage, which we generally ignore during our uh, computations, right? So if you just see how much is the force which is coming into the bushes you can see that in the post processor so let's just plot that so if you see the you know what was it 
on the money of the bush. So this is the NCF front the bush. So in the, in the post processor, you can see what is the force on the NCA front and the rear. What I'm interested uh, to see is the moment or the TZ moment, which is the rotational moment. So as you see over here, there is a significant amount of moment. It is 50,000, is it? Or five lakhs. So it is around 50,000 Newton per annum or 50 Newton per meter. This is the amount of moment or this is the amount of resistance that your uh, lower uh, control arm bush is giving. Okay. Similarly, you can see the moment of your upper control arm, uh, you know, which is, which will be called as the UCA. So in your UCA, you have, you can see the forces again, and you see that your UCA is taking much lesser amount of uh, moment in the, the direction, which is just around 1500. So, you know, your bushes are contributing towards the wheel rate, which we missed during our actual uh, computation. Right. Uh, so basically, Adams gives you a more precise results uh, with, uh, you know, as it takes into account all the non-linearities that is happening into the system. Right. So this is, so this is the case of wheel rate of how we can tune our wheel rate. So right now we have a wheel rate of say around uh, 55 Newton per mm. And we, if we have a target of say uh, 40 uh, Newton per mm, then we can tune our spring stiffness uh, and we can find the exact amount of spring stiffness that is required uh, to get a wheel rate of around say 40 Newton per mm or you can tune your, your bush stiffnesses as well but generally it is advised to tune the spring stiffness. <clears throat> so this was the first case of uh, you know using you know tuning the wheel rate in which we all are pretty confident of what to do, basically. So uh, for wheel rate, we know that we need to tune the spring stiffness, right? And that is what we have done over here. Uh, before we move on to the second case study, uh, can we take the questions uh, that we had, right? Yeah, let me go to the start of the chat box. Okay, uh, so the first question is, can we do it in MATLAB as well? Uh, you can do it in MATLAB, absolutely. But uh, the thing is that in MATLAB, you will have to write the equations of everything, okay? Which is a very tedious task. So, but if you're good at writing equations, yes, it can be done in MATLAB as well. Because what you have to do is you'll have to write the equations for every part the Marsh inertia properties, the kinematics, the bushings, the constraints, the test tricks, everything will have to be made in MATLAB, okay? And I think MATLAB also, <coughs> MATLAB has a model. I think it does, uh, but it may be for a specific kind of a suspension architecture, not for everything. But if you want to make a suspension right from scratch, you'll have to write the equations on your own, which is a tedious task, but it can be done, yes. Is there a, okay. What can be used for formula student vehicle? Uh, I mean, you can use items for uh, everything, you know? So even in your formula FSA vehicle, you will be deciding on what are the hard points that you need your suspension to be at, uh, that is suspension tuning. Uh, what are the good stiffnesses that you want to use or what is the spring stiffness um, you know what is the camber toe characteristics that you want basically the entire suspension tuning package uh, you know can be done using atoms right now what I, I have shown you is just the tuning of the wheel rate okay uh, next what uh, we will be seeing is uh, maybe the tuning of uh, bump steer okay um, so for every aspect of vehicle tuning, you can use this, be it FSA or any other uh, vehicle, right? 
okay so how to create you know you can create your temp so first there are multiple uh, ready to use templates in adams car right so you can use those templates on your own uh, you know they are ready to build so for uh, general suspension architectures like double wishbone or the macpherson strut or uh, red west wing you have standard templates which are already available which you can use directly uh, but if you are going for a new kind of a suspension adams also gives you the flexibility to make a template from scratch right can you name some oems which use adams okay so adams is used by almost every oem you know um, bajaj tata mahindra maruti suzuki uh, daimler uh, and apart from the tire one oems even the tire you know the the tire two component manufacturers also use adams Mm. anyone who is doing a vehicle dynamic simulation or uh, uh, you know a component synthesis uh, prefers to use adams the reason being that uh, the amount of support that you get into for adams is much larger than for any other software that's the main reason because uh, you know adams is the oldest software that is there in the market so there is a lot of forums and other things that you can that you have online and if you have any questions or anything you know uh, you can look into the forums and get an answer to or even the msc support is uh, pretty good so that is why you know prefer using adams but as i said you know like there are some oems like uh, uh, you know dp it's a service provider they prefer to use simpack because simpack is cheaper adams is generally more expensive so service providers generally tend to use cheaper version, ver- versions like maybe motion solve or uh, you know simpack but they are to a lesser extent you know the majority of them use adams how do we get these labels so you can just press the button v and you can see the labels uh, for the gardens understand okay what is this nurbs uh, let me get back to this question later i want to learn how to get the desired hard points okay so right now what we did is that we you got the desired spring okay you got the desired spring because you knew what wheel rate you want and how do you know the wheel rate that you want you know the wheel rate that is desired by you uh if you have attended my uh, you know theoretical class of vehicle dynamics you know that the wheel rate is determined by the natural frequency of the sprung mass so if you if your sprung mass has a natural frequency of say 1.2 hertz from that you know that you require a wheel rate of say around 41 newton per mm and for that you can find a spring stiffness so this is the process for defining your spring stiffness the process for getting your hard points is a little bit more complicated because using your hard points you are basically controlling a lot of your suspension properties like uh, bump steer camber steer uh, you know your compliance matrix like lateral force compliance longitudinal force compliance your steering properties like ackerman uh, your uh, total turn center your turning radius of your vehicle your steer angles so all this comes under suspension tuning which we also called as a knc tuning uh, kinematics and compliance tuning so in kinematics and compliance tuning we have a set of around 8 to 9 tests parallel wheel travel being one of the tests and using these tests we are trying to control so let me just show you a diagram eb Not 
Okay. So what do you see? Just have a look at this slide over here. You know, so uh, in my kinematics and compliance tests, I have the bounce and the rebound test. This is the parallel wheel travel test, which we just did. Then you have the roll simulations, steering simulation. Then you have your compliance simulations, right? So these are the mainly, uh, so what I show the six tests that you can do for kinematics and compliance. And using these tests, you know, so in bounce, I will be looking at the bump steer. Okay, so to tune the bump steer of the vehicle, you you will be optimizing your hard points. Okay, which we are going to see in the next example. Okay, then you you may want to uh, tune your tire rate of your suspension. Right, so in your bounce test, you can also tune your tire rate. In roll test, you will be uh, tuning your roll camber. For instance, so to get a certain roll camber, you may have to move a certain hard point somewhere. So uh, you know that way you have found the perfect position of your uh, hard point. So using these tests, these tests show which hard point you need to use, right? Uh, so this is how you basically tune your uh, hard points. Okay, so if you have a CAD file, you can import your CAD file into atoms and you know then basically define all the constraints in atoms. So you can import it and then you can define your joints, bushes, excuse me. <coughs> so you can define all your constraints in atoms and then you can use your CAD file. Uh, but generally, it's not advised to do that because, you know, even if you see the current model that we have over here, uh, basically Adams works on the concept of, uh, you know, the geometry doesn't matter to a large extent in Adams. Basically, we are, we are dealing with uh, the mechanics part of it, the motions. So, uh, you know, the CAD doesn't matter, but if you have a CAD file, yeah, definitely you can use it, right? How to put hard points from AutoCAD to Adams. So from AutoCAD, you can find the coordinates of different points, right? So from AutoCAD, there is a way to find the coordinates. Those coordinates, you use it in your Adams model, right? Is the force value shown against displacement in atoms and interpolated value calculated from user entered experimental value? And the force is calculated based on uh, the atoms inputs that we have given, right? Okay. Uh, you know, if we uh, right now what I'm giving is what I want to show is the uh, overview of you know basically how we use atoms for simulations. We'll do it in depth uh, when we start with the classes, right? Okay, so you can remove the drive shaft in the subsystem level. So if you if you don't want the drive shaft, then you can just see the suspension for view subsystem. And you can just say, you know, drive line activity, you can say inactive. So but if you want your drive line back again, you can say active. So you have your drive line again. Similarly, we remove the camber stiffness as well. Right. So let it be inactive right now. Um, the software does have some reading based on previous practical observations because all parameters. Uh, not at all, actually. You know, there are no practical observations. Whatever you, whatever practical observations you have, you can actually put it in in the form of some some form of modeling. Okay. Let me give you a very simple example. So obviously, even this model that we have has taken into account only certain things. So first, we were at the theory part, which took into account only just two parameters in the suspension, right? The spring and the motion ratio. 
then we came to the adams part which is taking into account some more parameters and it's becoming a little more accurate but obviously there are many other things that adams is still missing okay so for instance you can have the flexibility of different components okay so flexibility of different components may play a significant role in some simulations but not for all simulations for instance it plays an important role when we are finding the compliances of the suspension but if you are not interested in the compliances only in the kinematics rigid body dynamics works out fine and so whatever uh, parts or whatever parameters you feel are important those can be uh, you know modeled in adams okay so for instance one of the pretty common things that we do is modeling the camber stiffness or the knuckle stiffness of the uh, suspension so we generally have a bush over here uh, which you can see it in the template mode so just look at this bush okay you have a bush so this so this bush that you see at the wheel center over here you know this bush is uh, this bush shows the stiffness of the knuckle joint between the knuckle and the wheel because we know that in a full vehicle simulation the knuckle stiffness is uh, is a important parameter for giving the right uh, transient matrix or the right transient simulations so when we do a step steer for instance and we are finding the time delay now if i want to get the right time delay i need to model this uh, knuckle stiffness properly uh, so yeah you know this wasn't there in the model earlier but we found this parameter and we modeled it so if you have any practical uh, parameters which you would like to model in adams even that is possible but you need to know what to model that is the important thing adams is not going to tell you because adams is just like a calculator it will calculate whatever you whatever inputs you are giving it right so you need to know what you need to model yeah the bush is restricting the wheel travel see the cad modeling is not important over in adams even if you don't have a cad model you can still make a multi body dynamics model because what you are seeing over here is that you know these are links these don't look like my actual uh, links right so this is not the upper control arm actual link this is not the the, the tire rod doesn't look like this these are only for graphical purposes so in adams there is an option of working absolutely without cad also you don't need to have a, a cad model uh the air spring becomes a little bit more complicated because uh, in air spring the the stiffness of a air spring changes with inflation pressure so you know uh, but yeah adams gives you option of uh, tuning air springs as well so if you look at over here you know you can just say replace this spring with a air spring okay so you can replace all instances and then you know this is how your air spring looks basically so for different inflation pressures you have different curves and then you'll have to tune these curves right so yeah you can tune your air spring as well okay let's get this back actually we want to be dealing with normal springs okay um so uh, you know you are setting the bush stiffness in adams but how do you set it practically in the car so you can set it up in the car also basically you have to measure the bush which is something that i doubt that you when i mean that you need to test the bush you need to take it to the bush testing machine and you need to find the actual stiffness of the bush 
and once you have that burst you need to put it into the sleeve and bind it on both the sides uh, you know you need to bind it on the vehicle side also and you need to bind it on the uh, control arm side when i say bind it you need to make it stick i don't have a lot of information on how to do it practically on the car i've just seen the test people do it but maybe the test engineer is the right person to help you with doing it practically on the car basically you have to tell them you have to tell the manufacturer or the you know who is making the uh, suspension that this is the bush stiffness that you uh, want to install on the vehicle and then they do it it can be done basically yes it can be used for a atv also how do you decide uh, the stiffness for a particular vehicle so say for instance you know if you want to de decide it, which stiffness are you talking about is it the bush stiffness or the spring stiffness no i don't think you have a template for a push pull rod suspension i uh, yeah i mean it is pretty cool i have seen what i know is that the best uh, fsa team in the country is uh, coep uh, college of engineering pune um, and they they regularly use adams for uh, suspension optimization mm -hmm. i support them also we support them we have support them is there any student discount on adams uh, okay don't go to buy adams Uh, basically how you should use adams is that if your uh, college either has adams uh, you know if your college either has a student edition of adams you can use that which you know which is will be free of free of cost for you or i would say you know you can get it from the internet basically for reason that is that is what majority of the people do I mean, what factor should we take into consideration to uh, decide the stiffness of a steel Japan car, Jeep, or a Formula Supra? So, which stiff? So, if it, so the factors that you should take into consideration for defining your bush stiffnesses would be your compliance matrix, yeah, which is this part, right? Which are these parts: your compliance steers, your roll centers. uh to get a certain amount of compliance tier say you have a target of compliance tier of say 0.2 and this uh, target has to come from your side you know you, and how do you know the target for compliance tier um so you know the factors that compliance tier affects okay this we covered in our uh, theory class that is to say that you know that if you have a lot of compliance tier it is going to affect your tire wear and if you don't have any compliance steer the driver is not going to get the right feedback to uh, on the steering wheel so you know that your compliance steer has to be of a certain limit say between um, 0 to 0.5 and it can't be negative so you go with depending on the type of car that you are making you choose a value between 0 and 0.5 and once you have a value for compliance steer you tune your bushes to get the right amount of compliance steer uh, right so you, so this is what you are saying that you know so you choose which factors you want and then you choose your bushes how much ram is required to run adam simulations are actually adam runs on a pretty standard laptop also so right now i'm running adam on a 4 gb machine uh, which is a laptop um, and i think it has a i5 processor which is not at all a simulation grade uh, processor so it runs because adams is a pretty lean software so it runs on almost uh, you know uh, even on a lean machine um non uniform rational bias blind i just asked to select the hard points so again if you are selecting your hard points the main things that you need to take uh, into consideration is the kinematics part you know so hard point which hard, so some hard points influence your bump steer some hard points influence your wheel recession and for each of these you'll have to tune the hard points to get the right value right 
when I open any terminal, I see the drive shaft, how to delete it. I think I already told you this. You can either delete it at the template level or itself, or you can come to your subsystem level and then delete it. So anti-squat characteristics of the front suspension. Again, this is a pretty standard uh, output over here. You can get it in the post processor. What I've shown you is just the wheel rate, but if you just search for anti, you know, it will give you the anti-squat, anti-lift, it will give you everything. We have uh, anti-dive, anti-squat, and you can plot that for your suspension as well. Um, anti-squat, can a geometry be made in atoms? No, it can't be made in atoms. You know, you can make a geometry, but very simple geometries like links and spheres. You can't get the amount of detailing that you get in CACIA V5 or any other standard CAD software, right? So you can make simple geometries like links. So whatever geometry that you see over here, this geometry, this, these blue links. So this link is made in atoms, right? Um, these links are made in atoms. The tar geometry is made in atoms. Uh, but if you if you have the actual part, you know, with all the beads and the sheet metal, the welds, that kind of detailing can't be done in atoms. Uh, atoms is quite difficult to create a model. No, actually, you just need to learn it. Uh, that's it. So, how do we uh, give the inputs in an atoms model? Uh, so the coordinates can be input by using your, uh, you know, hard points. So these are, this is my hard point for instance. So this is just one hard point. Generally, when you are giving the table, this is how Adam shows all the hard points, right? So these are all the hard points that is there in the assembly. You can put each of the hard points independently, right? Exactly. What approximate method uses atoms and uh, does atoms use? Sir, is there a working demonstration in atoms according to calculations? So I just showed it to you how we are using atoms against our calculations. How to get dampers? Okay, dampers is one thing that we should leave out of atoms. Uh, because even till date, uh, even in the industry, dampers is tuned by the subjective uh, assessment people. That is to say that it is tested and then applied. So there is a, you know, there's a lot of theory on how you can choose your dampers, which I've taught in the vehicle dynamics class as well. Uh, but, you know, those calculations, but finally the damper is tuned by the subjective people. How do I add steering to my template? Okay, you don't add steering to your template because the template is built at your suspension level. But you know, if you want to add your steering, you can just say manage assembly, add subsystem, and you add a steering to it, right? So let's put some steering over here. Right, where is the steering? Shall we put the steering? Let's put a simple steering. So now what you have is what you can see is that we have added a steering. Similarly, you can add a ARB, you can add a subframe, you can add all of those, right? Okay. Okay, what is the difference between multi-body dynamics and vehicle dynamics? So multi-body dynamics is a method to study vehicle dynamics. So multi-body basically means I'm using multi-bodies in dynamic situations. So multi-body is a method to study vehicle dynamics. You can read this book by Blundell, a multi-body dynamics approach to vehicle dynamics. So in which he talks about the multi-body dynamics approach to vehicle dynamics. 
right? Um, what if maybe I have spherical bearings instead of bushes? I don't have stiffness of spherical bearings. So if you don't have, so if you have bearings over there which are pretty stiff, you know, you can replace it by joints, basically. You, know, you can have spherical joints over here. Uh, which has to be done at the template level, not in the assembly level, right? Uh, can we calculate heat generated? No, this is not for heat generated and heat transfer at all. It is for dynamic uh, simulations. It's for kind of it's, it's for dynamics, not so heat generated. Can we write dynamic equations to change hard points? Yes, you can. It's called macros. Uh, you know, you can write a code to to change your hard points as well. How to see the anti-squat percentage? So this I uh, showed. Is there a suspension need? And Adams, uh, and what about spring stiffness? What factors we take? So for spring, mainly I would say that you should take the chassis, this thing, you know, the, the frequency of the sprung mass of the chassis into account. Mm. That is how you should be designing your spring stiffness. We get graph of force versus velocity, how we enter the same data in atoms. So if you see a, a damper definition over here, you know, that is exactly how it's been defined. You know, you have the force versus the compression data in atoms, right? So during extension, it is much larger. During compression, it is much lower. So as you can see, it is quite non-linear. Initially, you have a higher slope, and then it tunes down, and then you have a lower slope, and then it even further comes down. So we have theoretical methods of calculating the uh, damper stiffness, but this is again in theory. This is like this method. This is how we calculated the spring stiffness. Similarly, you can calculate the damper stiffness also in theory. Uh, but the problem is that uh, since damper affects the ride quality of the vehicle to a very large extent, the damper is generally tuned by the subjective assessment uh, people, right? Uh, sprung, unsprung mass, tire quality, terrain type. How do you how do we obtain this kind of a data? So sprung and unsprung masses you can directly obtain from atoms. There's a very good method uh, to get it in atoms. I'll share it with you in the actual class. That's not a problem. The tire quality, unfortunately, has to be measured uh, by the tire people. Tire is one of the black boxes that we have in atoms. So, you know, as we are discussing, and so, you know, let's go to the tire, okay. So the tire is still pretty complicated. Okay, let's go to a property file and let's see a kind of a tire that we have. So generally for our handling simulations, we use a pack tire model or a Pajeka model, right? So if you just look at the tire file over here, I have over 100 coefficients over here of tire. So this is a tire property file. A spring property file would have just a two numbers in it. One would be the spring stiffness and the other would be the spring free length. Okay, but this is the tire property file where you have these many coefficients. Okay, so these coefficients generally come out of the tire test rig. Okay, it comes out of the tire test rig and uh, some of these coefficients you can guess, but you need to have the actual tire data in front of you. You can't start making a tire out of thin air. <clears throat> you know, uh, so the tire basically comes from the supplier and getting a mathematical model of the tire can, can either come from the OEM uh, who can measure the tire from the supplier uh, or it comes from the supplier himself. Uh, and there are many types of tire models. So. The tire in itself is, as you all are, I feel you all are vehicle dynamics enthusiasts and you should know that the tire is a critical component of vehicle dynamics. And, uh, you know, tuning the tire is uh, pretty important and that comes from the manufacturer. We can tune it at RN to a certain extent, but then we give our requirements to the manufacturer, like say MRF or Apollo, and they manufacture it uh, for us, right? The terrain type, 
Okay. So the terrain type is actually measured by different OEMs. So you can have, so ARAI, uh, which is a government organization, measured the Indian roads and they give you the road profile of the, you know, so they give you the road profile. So if you want to show that to you as well, so let's do it at a full vehicle level. So let's open a suspension, not the front vehicle. Let's open this. Okay. So, uh, so right now what we have seen is that we have seen only the uh, we have seen only the half vehicle simulation. So just like the front suspension, you can have the rear suspension also. This is the full vehicle. It's a default uh, model in Adam's car. It's a default assembly in Adam's car. So when I try to do a uh, terrain, okay. So let's say you try to do you're doing a straight line acceleration event. Okay, and in that Adams asks you for a road profile. Standard, the standard definition is a flat road profile that we have. Okay, it's a 2D flat road. But in this, you can Adams also gives you a very, you know, a large variety of road profiles. So, for instance, you can use a CRG road profile, which is an open source road profile. And let's have a look at the open source road profile, which is a Belgian block. Okay. So have a look at this. This is the road profile of the Belgian block. Okay. And you can run your vehicle on this type of a road profile. Okay. So this is a very default type of a road profile that we have. Um, but if you have an actual road profile, even that can be measured using a profilometer and you can give that as an input and add-ups. So whatever road profile you want, you can work with that. Um, what is this? How do I get H arms in the rear? What is H arm? What is the link for the textbook? You can just search for this. Uh, it is by Mike Blundell. It is by Mike Blundell. Um, uh, it's called multi-body multi -body approach. Approach for vehicle dynamics yeah. it is uh, this okay and how to decide the damper stiffness natural frequency of sperm was can you elaborate on this so there's a uh, actually i was trying to find the sheet of that i thought in the you know the actual class but i seem to find it Displayed it somewhere. Actually, there's a yeah, it's pretty simple. Uh, it's written in Gillespie as well on how you can find the uh, the actual. Let me see if I can find the sheet. You but it's there in Gillespie. You can have a look. Okay, um, it, on what the stiffness of your sprung mass should be, and depending on your sprung mass stiffness how to tune the uh, spring stiffness. Okay. Vibration analysis of arms, how do you do it? Similar like arms. So if you want to do the vibration analysis, I think Adams is definitely not the right uh, place to do the vibration analysis. But, you know, if you have a flex body, like I have a flex body over here, okay, you can find the natural modes of the system in atoms okay so let me just give you an example so this is the first mode of atoms which is the first natural frequency uh, this uh, this body has 30 natural frequencies so this is the second mode 
of Adams uh, of uh, the lower control arm. So I would say that you know at least uh, coming to know the actual uh, the practical modes of the suspension to that extent it is useful to do it in Adams. But if you want to do a vibration uh, optimization, then you know definitely Adams would not be the right tool. Uh, for doing a vibration optimization, I suggest you should go to Nastra. That would help you, right? Okay, sorry, I sent the message in to everybody. Hello. So the name of the book, uh, the book. And I think the name of the book is Multibody Dynamics Approach to Vehicle Dynamics, right? Uh, yes, of course, there are some standard road profiles in Adams. Uh, you know, there are more than a standard road profiles in Adams. There are a lot of road profiles in Adams, in fact. If you just say, you know, you can go from here, you want to do this, and you have a lot of road profiles which are there in Adams, right? So these are the road profiles that you have, which is quite a lot, you know. So these these amount of road profiles well, you can do your handling simulations, your ride simulations, as well as your component level simulations in Adams. <clears throat> all right so i think now that we have answered all the questions i would like to just give one more example because time is running out uh, i wanted to give one example to let me just give okay so this was our uh, suspension Okay, so what we did in the previous example was that, uh, uh, you know, we wanted to tune the wheel rate of the suspension and we knew exactly what to target. We knew that, uh, you know, by changing the spring stiffness, I will be able to change my uh, wheel rate of the suspension, right? So that was, what was that? Now, say for instance, uh, let us talk about something a little more complicated where you don't know what to do. Okay, so for instance, say you want to change the bump steer of your vehicle. Okay, but you don't know how to tune the bump steer, which parameters affect the bump steer. Okay, in that case, uh, Adams gives us a very, uh, very nice tool, which is called the Adams Insight tool which helps us to find parameters which affect a certain response. In this case, the response is the bump steer of the vehicle. Okay, so let us try doing that. So the intention over here is to find which parameters affect the bump steer of the vehicle. When I say bump steer, the bump steer is nothing but this, uh, you know, the toe versus wheel travel car slope. So you plot the toe So you plot the toe versus wheel travel and the slope of this graph, which in this case is 0 0.0363 uh, degree per mm. So you're supposed to be looking at this figure, which defines the bump steer. So the toe angle versus wheel travel, right? Uh, so I want to tune the bump steer of the vehicle, which is one of my KNC properties, right? So it is one of the most basic and important parameters of the uh, suspension tuning, right? And I don't know which properties it affects. Say you don't know about it, okay? <clears throat> So what you can do is Adams uh, gives you, just a second. Okay, so what you can do is you can set up a DOE interface, which is design of experiments interface. Okay, so 
let us define a design objective, which in this case is the bump steer. But since bump steer is not directly given uh, in Adams, you know, you will have to make a custom macro, which is over here. It's called a view function and a macro. We'll have to make it. So let us do something which uh, mimics bump steer, right? Something which mimics bump steer. Uh, that would be, say, the maximum value of toe. Okay. So let's go over here. Let's search for toe. And here it is. Okay. Let us see how the toe has been defined. It is toe angle dot left. Okay. I think so. So let's work with test like dot this. This is the design objective that we want. Okay. And let's see the maximum value during simulation. Okay. And let's call the objective as max to. And if I know the max to, I would also know an approximate value of the bump steer, or at least I would know the tendency of the bump steer. So if the maximum to is decreasing, even the bump steer would be decreasing. Okay. Let's say okay. Uh, so in the DOE interface, the first step is to define the design objective. Then we say a simulation script. You know, how does it have to run the simulation? So it gives us a, Adams gives us a good way. We can just import the ACF. Okay. So we can import the ACF. We did a wheel travel simulation, a parallel wheel travel simulation. Or we can just import that. ACF, we want to say that's okay. Let us set the directory in which Adams is going to dump all the uh, simulation files, right? So we made a design objective, we made a simulation script. A simulation script is basically telling Adams on what to do. So in our simulation script, it's written to take the wheel up by 15 mm and uh, rebound by 15 mm. Right. And then before you start this, it is always a good idea to evaluate your design objective. Okay. So we have a design objective, which is max to, and let's see it in this expression. Okay. And so it is evaluating the max to as 0.5428 degrees, which is the maximum amount of to. Let us just confirm this with our post processing. Okay. So as you can see, the maximum to is 0.5429. So we have made the right design objective. Uh, let us start the insight. So we have done the first two steps. We have defined what variable we are interested in, which is in this case, the maximum two value of the suspension. We have defined a simulation script, uh, which is a step in the process. And now we go into the Adams Insight process. So as we are starting, we need to export this into uh, the Adams Insight variable, right? So what we do is we call the uh, experiment as just wheel rate, okay? And the simulation script is already defined, right? So the simulation script was called simscript underscore one. We say, okay. So this is the Adams Insight uh, interface of Adams. Let's go into, so what we have to do is we need to, uh, so look at the overview of this. You have the factors, you have the responses. In responses, I have, uh, I have just one variable, which is the max toe, okay? So I'm interested in studying this response. And I have all the factors which are there in the suspension, okay? So I have the, all the variables in my test rig, so you can vary your, so what I mean by factors is that whatever you include in the factors, Adams is going to vary those factors and give you a response output, okay? So say for instance, you know, you can put in all the factors, you can put all the 640 factors. So in these 640 factors, what you have is, You'll have all your hard points, you'll have your bush stiffnesses, you'll have your parameter variables like your initial toe and camber angles, spring stiffness, damper stiffness. Everything is there over here. 
all the variables that you have in your suspension analysis okay and you can put in all these variables and you can do a design of experiment study to see which factors are influencing your maximum torque okay but for demonstration purposes i'll just choose a variable that i know affects the bump steer okay which in this case is nothing but the tie rod uh, z position right the outer tie rod so what i'm going to do is uh, i'm choosing both the left hpl and the right variables hpr i'll just tie them up uh, and we'll call this as the tie rod z okay you can define how much you want your variable to vary okay so in this case it is 1% of the initial value so the initial value is 330 adams is going to vary it minus 3.3 to 3.3 in a relative fashion so adams is going to vary it from 330 minus 3.3 to 330 plus 3.3 Uh, just for demonstration purposes, you know, either or you can put in custom limits over here. That is absolutely fine. Okay, so we are going to start this. Okay, there. Once you, so what I have done over here is, I have just taken one uh, factor and one response. So I have one is to three eighty eight because I tied up the left and the right uh, hard points so that both the left and right hard points move symmetrically. right so i have one factor and one response just for simplicity okay then we define what type of variation we would like to do so adams gives us a lot of strategies that you can use you know monte carlo hypercube and each of them have their own advantages uh, you know when we do it in detail we can look into it uh, but for this simple study let's do a simple sweep study okay let's do a carry out a maximum number of four variables uh four uh, runs and we say apply and let's just see the workspace <clears throat> so what adams is going to do is it's going to do four uh, simulations in which my variable or the factor which is the tie rod outer z position is going to vary from 3 to 6.7 to triple 3.3 okay um once i have set up my workspace i have set up my factors i can directly calculate it so you know now what's happening is that adams is running the script in the background just give it some time Okay. Until then, let me just see if there are any questions. <clears throat> How to calculate the roll stiffness of the vehicle? It is just half kT square, where k is the wheel rate. Now the suspension. Again, um, all these were covered in the uh, theoretical part of vehicle dynamics class. Please explain about damper stiffness. How do you research when you know what you have done so far, Fox? But I want to change my approach to third. Remba, um, how do you calculate this principle? Okay, fine. See, let me give you a overall idea. Oh, I don't know what has happened to Adam. So he's doing something in the background. But let me give you an approximate idea of what we can do with. Spring stiffness. Okay, so say you have a natural frequency of you. You want to have a chassis natural frequency of one point two hertz. Wait a second. Just give me a little time. Okay, let me see where I have placed that, and then let me get back. Okay, with the actual computation of the spring stiffness. Right. 
So this is a simple sheet that we have, uh, which we use to calculate the spring and damper stiffnesses. Uh, so, you know, basically, okay. Okay, so, uh, so items is come back to the, Okay, so now what Adams is doing is that it is. Wait a second. Okay, let let Adams uh, do it in background. Basically, what we have is we use this kind of simple sheet to compute the spring stiffness, basically. So as you can see over here, we have the, uh, you know, the springs and the damper and the ARV stiffness calculations. So you choose the kind of, uh, you know, uh, the sprung mass frequency that you would like to have. And based on this frequency, the, you know, the front spring rate is determined. For instance, say if you want to have so for instance, say, you want a wheel rate. So let's keep this as, So, you know, uh, as you change your wheel rate, obviously your uh, sprung mass frequency is changing. Uh, if you want to learn more about the sprung mass frequency, you can, you know, read Gillespie. It's given in detail. So you can change your, uh, you can change this frequency to get a wheel rate or you can change your wheel rate to get this frequency. Generally, the frequency is fixed, okay, say at 1.2. Okay, and then we generally use this kind of a method, say data, goal seek, or is it tools? Let's go to tools, goal seek, and we would like to have a frequency of say 1.2, 1.2, and we would like to vary the front wheel rate okay and then you say okay so you know you uh, basically you achieve a frequency of 1.2 and uh, adams uh, you know excel gives you the value of wheel rate and spring rate but basically the defining criteria for uh, the spring would be the sprung mass frequency uh, and you should read a little bit of gillespie it's given in detail over there not in detail, but it'll give you the overall idea of uh, what's happening, right? So let's go back to Adams now. What's happening in Adams is, I don't know what has happened. Um, this is again. In this way. Right, and what happened? So, okay, unable to add up an Adam to analysis. Why is that? Okay, so. Okay. I'll just put it over here. Thank you. 
Wait a second. Let's just read this again. In just a second, guys. Oh, okay, Adams has gone into the background. But basically what we have done over here, uh, I mean, it will start working Adams in a minute. Uh, but basically what we have done is we have done a DOE study wherein we have varied uh, a certain factor to study the response that we were interested in, which in this case was the bounce tier, right? Uh, so I think we are out of time for the day. Uh, if the results of Adams are back, I will definitely share that. Uh, I will definitely share that. Okay. So, uh, I think if we have any final questions, we can take them up. Okay. So let us just wait for the Adams simulation then. Guys, uh, till then, if you have any final questions, uh, feel free to ask those questions. Uh, we can take those questions, and uh, in another 10 minutes, we'll be uh, kind of coming to the end. Uh, so, uh, so the other thing that I wanted to also mention you guys was we have a full-fledged vehicle dynamics course coming up using Adams. Mr. Vivek Badia will be the instructor for the course as well. Uh, so. Uh, if you if you are interested in the coursework, or uh, what you can do is you can let us know your name and number. Uh, Vivek, uh, there is a question from Anshul. Uh, sir, can we calculate steering effort in Adams? Definitely, it's definitely doable. Okay, you you can go go ahead with the Adams thing, Vivek. I'll uh, I'll have my part later, so you can go ahead. Okay. Then, uh... Okay, so now it's working, guys. So as you can see, Adams is doing all the simulations in the background. Uh, you know, you don't, uh, you just decided which factors you would like to vary. 
and here it is plotting your response which is the max flow against the trial so as you can see as the thyroid heart point is varying the max flow is also changing right so from this you know that you know the thyroid uh, outer heart point is a important variable uh when you're deciding the bomb steer of the vehicle right so it is a good idea to confirm what adams has done so let's just import all the let's just import all the uh files and see where or what has it done exactly these were the simulation files so here we see all the simulations have been loaded let's look at uh, you know the two angle which is supposed to be changing so yeah so here we see that as the thyroid has been moved you know the toe is also changing hence uh, you know from so what i have done over here is that i knew that the uh, thyroid outer z is a important coordinate for the bomb steer and i've just demonstrated it like this but you know you can choose a n number of factors and you can find the actual response uh, or the factors which are responsible for changing the uh you know any parameter of your suspension okay so i would just like to show you an example of the kind of things that we uh so say for instance this these are the kind of files we generally make to study the complete uh, behavior of the suspension so you have something like this okay we have done a parallel wheel travel wherein our variables were the um, lower control arm rear z the lower control arm front z lower control arm front y lower control arm rear x x and y so with these variables we have done a parallel wheel travel and we would like to see the response of these on different effects so on say wheel travel or uh, see the caster angle the steer angle the spring displacement so this was a pretty expensive study that we have done and this is only part of the study so what you see is so let me just give you a simple example so as expected you know the biggest so just take this example okay where rch rch is the roll center height okay i want to find out the parameters which affect the roll center height okay so the parameters that i have chosen over here are bcp these six parameters okay and from this uh what i see is that the roll center height is the most sensitive that is that is it has an effect of 212% on the base value uh the front lca front z right this coordinate has the most effect on the roll center height right and the remaining factors like as in the x coordinate or the y coordinates they have minimal effects on the roll center height right so similarly you can uh, you know this is the bomb steer this is the bomb steer response so similarly we had done the study for the entire suspension for all the knc parameters which is a pretty big study right and if you see i think i should do i have it so i don't think i have that file over here but you know basically when compile all these uh, all these responses and make a pretty good excel sheet out of it so that the next time uh, when you are doing the simulations you will know exactly what to change to meet your design objective 